The spirit of these nocturnal practices altogether, I think, is worth um, iterating here. And is the analogy that I've come up with is that it's very similar to what happens if we were to completely illuminate this room and just saturate it with light. And then all of a sudden the lights were removed or we were to step outside. For the first few moments, of course, you can't see a thing. I mean, your pupil is very highly constricted in the daylight. And then so when you step into the dark, you're, you're actually blinded by the light. Um, but yet if you remain with your eyes open in the night, and that is in fact what these nocturnal practices do, is they teach you how to keep your nightlight on, how to keep your night eyes open, you slowly start to see things that have always been there, but you've never seen before. And so this kind of charter of making unconscious processes conscious, which one could argue is one of the kind of themes of liberation altogether, is what underlies these nocturnal practices. And so also when we engage in these meditations, and if you um, undertake this invitation, you will discover, um, as I have over decades, is that you're studying origins when you study darkness. Um, in both Greek mythology and the, actually the book of Genesis, it's put forth that darkness always precedes light. Every day arises from the dark. Every thought arises from the dark, returns to it. Every um, moment, and even cosmologically, one would argue that even the entire cosmos arises out of background darkness and returns back to it. And so if we can establish a relationship to darkness, we will see things that we've never seen before. The other thing that we're doing here is we're replacing this kind of archetypal Western relationship we have to consciousness, which is either as black or white, it's on or off, it's dead or alive. It's represented in these light switches in this room, yeah? So what we're doing with these practices is we're installing a type of dimmer where we can grade our mind, we can titrate our consciousness as we descend into sleep, and we can maintain, you know, using this metaphor, a few photons of awareness as we go from the full waking consciousness state into the dream and into the dreamless state. And in so doing, our meditation becomes more complete, and it also helps us illuminate the way we relate to waking reality. And Jordan and I are going to talk about this tomorrow, because if you only relate to your worldly problems from a purely wake-centric or egoic stance, you're leaving out different perspectives that you can bring to your worldly problems that can be exercise through dreaming consciousness and deep dreamless consciousness. So this is not just kind of metaphysical mumbo jumbo. Cultivating this type of awareness can help you solve your worldly problems. Many studies have shown that lucid dreamers, and the Buddha really was the ultimate lucid dreamer, lucid dreamers are better at problem solving because they have these increased capacities for perspective, which as Ken has written about repeatedly, Heightened perspective is a central ingredient of evolution itself. So you're working with the evolutionary capacities of your mind-body matrix when you engage in these practices, whether it's a diurnal practice or, in this case, a nocturnal one, yeah? So here's a final quotation, and we're done. This is from a beautiful book by Barbara Brown Taylor, Learning How to Walk in the Dark. Fantastically elegant book <clears throat> from a Christian theologian. A bed, in short, is where you face your nearness to or farness from God. Whether you are in pain or not, whether you are an anxious person or not, even, I think, whether you are a religious person or not, a bed is where you come face to face with what really matters because it is too dark for most of your usual shallowing distractions to work. You can turn on the lights if you want, but they are all artificial. The most they can do is postpone your encounter with what really matters. They cannot save you from that reckoning forever. Today, seekers seem more interested in getting God to turn the lights on than allowing God to turn them off. So this is one way to turn these lights off properly and with some elegance. So, Pleasant dreams.